master of segways. Like, what can't I do? I mean, what can't I do, Jay Croucher? You can't keep Jalen Hurts healthy. That's one. That's on uh, you. I, I'm, it's yet to be determined. <laughs> yeah. We'll see if he misses. It's Hold not. A, he hasn't officially been ruled out just yet. Uh, before we get into running back waiver wires, and as you can imagine, the guys from Indianapolis that are going to replace Jonathan Taylor lead our list here. It's just worth looking. The answer is most likely no. But it's just worth looking in your league to see if Jarek McKinnon's still available because he's yeah. rostered. He's rostered in only about 80% of Yahoo League. So there's a chance. It's a slim one in any competitive league. But there is a small, slight chance that McKinnon is out there. And if for some reason he is, 22% available specifically, I'm told here. Uh, you know, if, if there's a slight chance that he's out there, then... Then he's the number one. He's the number one. There's, <laughs> yes. there's no question about it. He's the number one running back each of the past two weeks. But assuming McKinnon is gone, which is the assumption for most competitive leagues, Deion Jackson and Zach Moss are both available. And I think we don't really know how this this backfield breaks down my instinct is Deion Jackson just because um Jackson has had um more passing game usage in his career and specifically this year with the Colts uh than Zach Moss has now the uh, the Zach Morris argument is is that last week he played 67 percent of the snaps compared to the 32 percent of Jackson when Jonathan Taylor went out they they kept going with Zach Moss Taylor Jackson had a bad fumble uh in this game as well it, but the part of the problem here, Jay, is it was such a weird game. They were up 33 to nothing. And so maybe they're like, we're going to just, hey, we got this big lead. We just got Zach Moss a couple of weeks ago. Let's get let's get Zach Moss some run. Yep. We're up 33 points. Like, who cares? Like, you know, let's just pound this guy between the tackles. Yeah. Dale Jackson has a 10 reception game this season as well, back against uh, the Jags a couple of months ago. So I think he's definitely the guy with higher upside. I think he's probably just the more explosive guy as well. So I think he would probably be the preference. But this is potentially a big deal because the Chargers run defense, as we know, is not very good. Yeah. Derrick Henry got going a little bit against them on the weekend. So those two guys are close yeah. to the top of the list. Uh, let's talk about. And I, I wouldn't mind. I mean,. I will also say that I, my, my assumption is is that in most leagues, Deion Jackson will be the priority over Zach Moss for yeah. two reasons. Number one is just I think more fantasy players have heard of Deion Jackson. Yes. He's had success with the Colts earlier this year, right? He, he, he's had some nice games there. He had, he's had four different games with 12 or more touches this year. He's averaging 14.4 fantasy points per game in those games. So Deion Jackson is more of a known fantasy co- commodity this year. He may actually even still be on some rosters, you know. Um, and Zach Moss is one of those guys that, you know, healthy scratch with Buffalo at, at various points. He's somebody that fantasy managers have had on their team and have waived, you know, before. So I think there's probably a little bit of burnout with Zach Moss. Um, so I think there's a scenario where you could put in a claim for Jackson and also get Moss on the back around. And I wouldn't mind grabbing both because as we sit here on Tuesday at noon, we don't sort of know how it's going to break down. But maybe as the week goes on, we get some reporting or we see how they – you know, and we, we hear from some of the Colts beat reporters that, oh, turns out Zach Moss is getting all the run, you know, the, the RB1 reps in practice, yep. or it's Deion Jackson. We get more clarity. So I actually don't mind because it's the playoffs, it's the semifinals, and there's probably not a lot of players in your league going after running backs, you know, or going after players, I should say. At this point, there's probably just four teams in your league uh, going for it. I don't mind rostering both guys and just seeing if we can figure out between now and uh, the weekend – who's going to get the start for the Colts. Yep. But All if right. I'm making priority, Jackson over Moss for me. Okay, let's race through the rest of these guys. Uh, Falcons running back Tyler Algier, who looked a bit like last year's Jonathan Taylor on the weekend against the Saints, where he went 17 for 139 and a touchdown. He should be rocked with everyone. Season high, 18 touches in week 15. He's had double-digit touches now in 11 or 13 games so far this year. At least 50 yards from scrimmage in eight of his past nine. He looked good last week. Caleb Huntley. Out of the year, he's got that Achilles injury. Cordero Patterson, not part of the future. And I mean, Cordero Patterson on the wrong side of 30. They like Patterson. But Tyler Algier, the rookie, obviously has a chance uh, to be the guy. And as they're clearly going with Ritter under center, it's a little bit of a youth movement there in Atlanta. It makes sense for Arthur Smith to say, like, well, let's see what we got. Can this guy get a lead back? Do I need to be more committee? But can he handle an 18-touch workload like he did last week, the the the, the challenge here is that, that they're at Baltimore, yep. but certainly uh, after that, home to Arizona, home to Tampa Bay, uh, you know, their defense is reeling. So Algier is, is kind of interesting, as is Chuba Hubbard. Is he? Yes, just because Carolina runs the ball. They use their running backs quite a bit. Uh, they play Detroit this week. 
Detroit has a top three run defense over the last month. Yeah. So Chuba Hubbard, who's much more involved in the passing game than Deontay Foreman. And Deontay Foreman had one of the worst games in fantasy last week. And so I don't think uh, Deontay Foreman has a lot of success against this top five Lions run defense this week. So Chuba Hubbard, who um, has increased his touches each of the last four weeks, as you see it there on your screen, playing 63% of the offensive snaps against the Steelers in week 15, he becomes sort of flex interesting Three straight games now with over 65 yards from scrimmage uh, against the Lions this week. Again, he's more of a PPR flex play in a 12-team or deeper league, but that's what we're dealing with here. Another guy who's flex interesting is Gus Edwards, who plays against the Falcons. He's been overshadowed by J.K. Dobbins, but very favorable matchup uh, with the Ravens' seven-point favorites and expect that potentially can support two running backs. Since week 10, Falcons allow the fifth-most rushing yards per game to opposing running backs. Gus Edwards has played six games this year. He's, he has at least 50 yards rushing in five of them. He's always a threat to fall into the end zone. They do want to go run heavy here. The expectation is, is that it, once again, it'll be Tyler Huntley under center. We don't know. Maybe Lamar Jackson makes it back, but we don't know yet as we sit here on a Tuesday. And so I agree. Uh, in a great matchup against the Falcons, the Falcons can't stop the run. Baltimore will once again go fairly run heavy here. And, uh, you know, so I do think Gus Edwards becomes interesting. The challenge is... Dobbins is the better running back. Edwards has no passing game usage. He really needs a touchdown to pay off in a in a real way. But, like, I think he's probably 8 to 10 points with a shot at a touchdown. Yep. Okay, let's quickly race through some insurance running backs. Headlined by the guy who always headlines. This graphic, Alexander Matheson, backing up Dalvin Cook. And then other familiar names, Khalil Herbert, Jalen Warren, and Jordan Mason, and Joshua Kelly. Yeah, Khalil Herbert just reinstated from IR. Expect that to be a more of a timeshare in Chicago as well. Jalen Warren started playing a um, you know a lot of snaps last week. He's been playing more and more. It's clear that the, the Steelers are like anyone but um, anyone but Benny Snell. Uh, and then we finally have some clarity in terms of the Chargers. What would happen if anything happened to Eckler? Eckler actually had to go to the medical tent last week for a little bit. Joshua Kelly came in, actually punched in a touchdown while Eckler was out. So it's clearly him. So, yeah, I, it should, we should just name the list the Alexander Madison list. Yeah. Um, because, but put yes, his, put his again, the dictionary. again, I think just to this point, if you'd had Jonathan Taylor and you'd already had Deion Jackson and or Zach Moss on your roster, you're feeling better about, you don't love the fact that you lost Taylor, but if you managed to survive your matchup and now you're like, okay, I don't have to you know, battle with any of my guys in the league, any of the people I'm playing in the league, to try to go get, you know, Deion Jackson or Zach Moss or, you know, some some backup for, uh, replacement for Jonathan Taylor. So I just, just, I don't know. Why wouldn't you do this? Yeah, why not? All right, we're going to get a break. Why would you not? When we come back, wide receivers, including the man who's destroyed Matthew Barry in many a league, Zay Jones. Oh, that guy. Hey, it's Matthew Barry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way, thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay, respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Roto World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.